Hey what's up, it's Mike Thomas here. I want to help you out if you've learned HTML and CSS and you're weighing up your options, you're looking at how to progress your career but you don't know where to go from here. This isn't meant to be the definitive guide. These are just certain routes that you can take as I see it. There are many different routes if you're more of a designer, you can become a front-end developer. There are front-end developers that are stronger on design than they are development. It's not a very helpful job description, but it's what we're left with at this point. I think something eventually will come about that will better distinguish an individual's skill set. But you can become a design-centric front-end developer, shall we say. So in that regard, keep strengthening your HTML and CSS skills. It doesn't take a long time to learn them, but it takes a lifetime to master them. Learn SAS, learn version control, specifically Git. You don't have to master JavaScript if you know that your strength lies in design. You can get by with jQuery. You can even build e-commerce sites, social networking sites, by leveraging the power of a CMS. And there are many, WordPress, Perch, Expression Engine, Drupal. Personally, I have experience in WordPress, and I know that, uh, that there are two very popular e-commerce plugins. There's the WooCommerce plugin and Shop. There's BuddyPress, if you need to make a social networking site. There's two well-known WordPress themes, Divi, and Genesis. Divi is more geared towards the designer but it's very very flexible. Genesis is more geared towards the developer who wants uh, total control over the, the back-end side of things. The only thing with using a CMS is you've got to know how to, how to secure the database You'll need to have some kind of a maintenance package as well. I'm talking specifically on WordPress. I can't really speak for the other CMSs. I don't have experience with those. But for WordPress, it needs to be maintained. You need to either show the client how to update it or sign them up on some kind of a maintenance package. The thing with a maintenance package though is you may not want that kind of responsibility because you might update you might go through months where you update and everything goes smoothly and there may be that one month where you click update and it breaks and then you've got to try and fix it as fast as you can because you may not get be getting paid all that much on a maintenance package. So just bear that in mind. Eventually you may find that you team up with a developer, then they can take care of the programming side of things and then you can really hone your skills on UX and UI design. I think that's um, an exciting area. Even branding, and you can handle the whole discovery process of the project, get really clear on the client's message and their audience and guide the client through that area, produce the design and hand that over to the developer. The good thing about becoming part of a team is you have better access then to the $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 plus projects. If you're more of a programmer, you've got many options open to you. You've got back-end development, PHP, Ruby, Python, there's mobile development, iOS, Android, hybrid development. If you're really fascinated by site performance, you can even look into the server-side technology. There's Node.js. Node.js being, um, you're using JavaScript on the server, which brings me to my next point. You're probably eyeing up PHP, Ruby or Python. But there's JavaScript that sits right in between the front end and the back end. There's no escaping JavaScript. You're gonna to have to use it at some point. So you may as well learn it, get strong on it. And if you learn JavaScript first before mastering the others, you've many options because you can use it on the server end with Node.js. You can use it to build 
hybrid mobile apps with either Ionic or React Native. Ionic uses the Angular JS framework, React Native is pure JavaScript. I think the reason why a lot of people are still going for Ionic over React is that the React Native framework doesn't work for Android yet, but we have, we have been promised that it will be. So your options are open. JavaScript will help you to get familiar with uh, programming logic and then if you want then you can decide okay I'm gonna learn PHP or Ruby or Python. What I will say is that at least build one site that uses one of the popular static site generators because you're gonna have clients coming on on the scene they don't need a database so it's gonna feel a bit weird to give them a WordPress site and you're gonna want to know how to build them a good site with no database. You, you don't need a CMS even for a blog now. There are, there are other ways to generate blog content. Of course there are pros and cons with every technology so I encourage you to investigate further. But let's look at the static site generators that are out there. The most popular ones right now are Jekyll on Ruby and there's Hyde on Python Eventually, if you're getting yourself out there, you're networking, you're getting to know people, eventually you'll team up with a designer, they can handle the design side of things, then you can really hone your hardcore programming skills, learning about algorithms and re real large um, industry corporate level, uh, cor corporate level software. You don't need to be a hardcore mathematician. That really comes into play more so in games development. It's not to say that you don't need to be decent at mathematics, but again, don't let that put you off. So the other thing I wanted to mention was SEO. Especially if you're working alone, or even if you're a developer and a designer working in a team, somebody needs to be paying attention to what is going on in terms of SEO because that's a rapidly changing landscape also. I think Google are driving towards a more secure internet. So the reason why I mention this and the reason why it's so important is if you're redesigning a site you may change the URL structure of the site and, and that site will have its own uh, ranking in the search engines and you want that that ranking juice to relay over from the old site to the new site so you need to understand what a 301 redirect is you need to know this stuff. You need to know what a robots.txt file is, what it's for and, and, and what it does. I hear of a many, many disasters out there. Uh, you don't want to be involved in a disaster, so keep up to date in terms of SEO. There are many other areas that I haven't singled out that are on this graphic, but we're gonna get into each area on this graphic, either I'll shoot a video on it. Ideally, I want to bring on guests who are experts in specific areas and quiz them over a few things. So leave a comment below. Let me know that you exist. Let me know if you got something out of this and what you want me to focus on next or what you want me to ask guests in upcoming videos. Until then, I'll leave it there. Hope you got something from this. Take it easy. Do what you got to do. Get plenty of rest. Drink plenty of water. Stay healthy. Take care. Peace.